How is it going everyone? Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert and in this video I am going to be showing you how to build a little shopping cart application using React. So if you saw the last video I did, I kind of did something similar in Vue. Um, and someone suggested or asked if I could do it in React as well. So this is the React version. So in this application we have a cart and we have a products list. So inside the products list right now I have a battery and a blanket, but you could add, I don't know, a couple of batteries to your cart and notice that the number will go up. So the number is nine right now. If I go and I add a couple of blankets, the number is now 11. So I just added two blankets and now the user has the option to go and view what's in his cart, which is basically just changing some internal state to show a different component. We're not using a React router in this tutorial. We're not using Redux, we're just using prop drilling, props and state, that's about it. So it's really basic, really simple. But now we can go to our cart and we can see all the different items that we've added. And of course, we can remove the items that we don't want. So I'll just go ahead and just remove all of them. The cart's empty and we can go back and add stuff. That is basically what we're building. So if this is something that you're interested in watching, be sure to check this video out. And also be sure to subscribe if you're new to this channel because I publish a lot of videos like this. So for this project, I set up a create React app project structure, which you should be familiar by now if you've been following any of my videos. But let's just go ahead and get started. So what we're trying to build is a little shopping cart application. We're not going to be using like React Router or Redux or any type of like things like that. We're just going to keep it basic, use prop drilling and use state and stuff like that. So let's just go ahead and get to it so let's just open up the app.js file which is the main like app component that is being used when you start up a create react app and i'm just going to go ahead and delete some stuff we don't really need all that stuff your logo and save the page and we should see that it's a blank page okay so for a shopping cart application you typically have a page where you have products so if you think of like amazon.com or shopify you have a page that has a bunch of items and products and you can go ahead and like click on them and add them to your shopping cart so i think a good starting point would be to build a page that has a list of products so i'll just add an h1 and i will say products and there's some de default styling with the create react app where it like centers align different things so so we'll just keep that as it is. But anyway, we want to have a list of products that we're going to display. So if I wanted to display, let's say, a brush and a cookie, or maybe we should change it up to a car and, I don't know, a battery or something, let us try to do that. So if I say div, and inside here I could say the product name, so let's just say battery. And in here I could put a cost, so I'll do H4 and say that's... 299 or something. Maybe I should say that double A batteries, you know, be, be specific about what the product is. And then finally, you probably want an image, which we'll, we'll find some. And then we want a button, right? So add to cart. Now, if we save that, we don't have an image yet. So let's just find a double A battery and let's just go ahead and grab that image and use it in our little tutorial. All right, let's just grab this one. How about that? You know what? Let me not go to that page. Let me just say copy image address and put it directly in the source here. And now we should have a battery displayed to the page. It's pretty big, so we can style that. And it would make sense if we have another product that we wanted to show. So right now we're just showing a battery. But let's say we also want to show like a blanket or something. Ooh blanket if i could spell english is a very hard language all right so i'm going to click on this one i'll copy the blanket and basically it's going to follow the same pattern i'm just going to copy this div and i will just call that blanket and i'll say this is an expensive blanket 19.99 um make sure you grab that url and use that for your blanket source and let's go back and look. All right, so we have a battery and we have a blanket, okay? So the first thing I'll notice is that we have some repetitive code. It would make sense if we instead looped over an array and used the map function to kind of generate this JSX on the fly. Because, you know, if technically 
if you are accessing a real backend, you'll have a endpoint that returns you a list of products, de depending on the category that you're at or whatever. But in our case, we're not doing any type of extreme backend logic or REST. So we want to abstract the list of products into state so that we can render it inside of our JSX. So what we could do is bring in the use state. And technically, I think you could just probably put this in a constant and use that, but uh, it would make sense to use state, I guess, in this case. But anyway, using the use state call, we could have a list of products and then technically we're not going to be setting products anywhere because we're just going to use the initial state. So what we could do is have use state be an array of two different products and we are going to pretty much just pull out the things that we need so we have like name double a battery we have cost that was 299 we have image and there's some image source i think that's all we really need right right guys right should be good all right, so if I copy this code now and put that here, and instead of battery for the second entry of that array, I'm going to put blanket, that was 1999, and then that pointed to a different image location. Okay, so stay with me. Hopefully you are staying with me. You understand what I'm doing. I'm basically just allowing us to loop over some state inside of our JSX component. So instead of doing this whole logic here, what I could do is kind of copy this, cut this out. And this will be our little template here. And we want to loop over all of our products. Let's just comment this out for now. I'll bring it back in one second because we're going to focus on using the map function. So I want to map over all of our products here. So I can say products.map. And that is going to take in a callback function that takes a product and that's going to return JSX. Okay. So I could just do this. This should be proper syntax, and that's not going to display anything because it's basically going to loop over these two products and draw nothing. So if I were to actually instead put high there, it should print high twice. So you see high, high. So hopefully you're familiar with JSX, um, but what we could do is just basically cut that template, put it inside of here, and start referencing our product's names and our product uh, cost and whatever else. So I'm going to say product.cost here. And for source, I'm going to say product.image. And save that. Image must have an alt. So it's complaining that I have an alt. So I'm just going to add product.name so we don't see that lint error, which is kind of annoying. All right, so if you see over on the right, we have the exact same thing displayed to our UI. But now, the cool thing about it is that this is all abstracted into an array. So if I were to copy this a couple of times, notice that when the page refreshes, we get a bunch of different blankets because I just duplicated this. But if you can imagine, this would technically come from a backend with a list of products in whatever category that you're looking at. And then when you get that data, you're going to set that state in your state, your your React app is going to render that, okay? Anyway, um, moving on. What I did in this other app is I styled, if I go to app.js or app.css, um, what we could do is we could make a class called products, and I'm just want to make a grid with two columns here so the products are side by side. So I could say display grid and grid template columns is one fr. 1FR. So this should give us a class we can use to basically make a CSS grid. And inside of this, these are our items of the grid, we want to basically put a class called products. And I'm going to do that. So all those products are now wrapped in a products class. And notice now that the products are in two columns. So if I add a third one, that should wrap around and be in the first column down here. Okay, so Nothing too extravagant. One thing that's really annoying is these images are pretty big, so I'm going to style them. So I'll say products, image, uh, width is 100%. So let's see if that actually fixes anything. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Um, it's still not that great because there's like, I think there's some gap we could add between those. I don't remember how to do that. I think it's called like grid 
Uh, let's let's see. We have grid the padding or something. Yeah, I don't know, but what we could do instead is we could add a class name here. We could call this product. And in fact, we also probably need to put a key. So um, I'm going to put a key here and say product. Uh, actually, I'm going to say index. So when you're doing a map function, you can also do a second argument, get the index. So sometimes you do IDX. But when you're doing um, iteration in JSX, you typically need to provide a key for what you're displaying or else you get an error. We haven't seen the console yet, but there probably is, or there probably was an error. In fact, let me just remove this key and I'll show you. So I think when this renders, it should complain saying the child must have a unique key property. If you ever see this error, child must have a unique key property. Basically, you just need to make sure you add key to whatever is being rendered inside your map function. Anyway, okay. So what I was trying to do, I just want to add a little bit of padding. So I'll say padding is 20 pixels. And that'll kind of bring this stuff in a little bit, make it look a little bit, make it look a little bit better. I'll do 40 pixels. Okay. Um, awesome. Is this the best React app you've ever seen? I think it is. All right. Let's, uh, what do we want to do next? We could, <clears throat> okay. So we want to be able to basically click on add to cart and probably have that item be added to some type of internal data structure. Okay. So let's do some more state. Okay. So let's do um, a state called cart. And we will actually need the setter function here. So I'll say set cart. And what we do is you can say use state and that is equal to an empty array. Now, whenever we click on the add to cart button, we want to basically push the product into our cart. Okay, so first off, we don't have a function for doing that. So it would make sense if we had a function called add to cart, or you can add it whatever you, you can call it whatever you want. And that's going to take an argument as product. And it's going to be pretty simple. All we're going to do is call set cart. And we are going to basically make a new array. We're going to uh, destruct, use array destructuring to basically append the product to our existing cart. Okay. And we don't have it actually hooked into the button yet. So if I click this button, it does nothing. And in order to hook that up, we could just add an on click event listener and we could just call add to cart and pass it the product that we're trying to add, or the product that the user clicked. <clears throat> All right, so I think if I go to Redux, or not Redux, um, Profiler, is that it? Maybe I don't have it. There might be a way to actually inspect like the state of your application components, but I might not have that installed. But anyway, it's not that important. We could always just use console logs, right? Console logs are our best friend. So if I just go here and say we are in add to cart, or I could put a debugger statement, whatever you like to do. So now when I click these things, notice that it's printing out we are in add to cart. So our function is being called and set cart is also being called and that product should be appended to that. Um, <clears throat> the next step is we don't really have a way to see what's in our cart. Okay, so we're not using a React router, um, but for right now, we could use another state variable to kind of dynamically change what's displayed. So, I, I, sorry, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. What I want to do first is basically add a header and add a button that says, uh, I don't know, go to cart. And I think in the other tutorial in view, I actually displayed how many items are in your cart. So I could do that here just using uh, JSX and curly braces. I could say cart.length. So go to cart zero. And as I click on items, notice that this increment button is going up. And one thing I'm noticing is that these buttons are very small. Uh, I want to add some padding and there we go. Beautiful. Now I can don't have to squint when I'm looking at these buttons. Okay, so for the header, let's dial that some more. Um, so I'll just say background color. I think I did pink in the other one. And I did like height, 50 pixels. 
Uh, adding top 20 pixels. How about that? Might be a little much. Who cares? That's probably good enough. Alrighty. So, again, what we're trying to do, um, and if you have recommendations for how to style the CSS, I, I like how Vue has scope styles. I haven't really done that with React before. Like, I know people will can actually define styles inside your component here and then like apply them. I've never really done that because I don't I don't know if that's clean. It doesn't seem clean, but hey, who knows? It's the hip thing to do. But I like just putting them in my style sheets and then applying them to um, my apps as I go. But anyway, so that's okay. What are we doing? We are trying to click on this button and pretty much display uh, my cart down here. So the products should go away and the cart should be displayed. So in order to kind of toggle between what view that we're at or like what component is displayed, we're going to want more state. Okay, so we want to have another state. In fact, I'll just make a new one called um, page. And we can also have a setter called set page. And that is going to be set to a string as the initial state. So I'm going to say the initial page is going to be products. And what we could do is conditionally show the products if we are on the page product. So if page is equal to products we could show products over here and we're gonna have to wrap those in curly braces because i mean we're gonna have to wrap those in an empty div because you can't have um you must have a root element when you're doing stuff like that so some things people do is they'll actually pull this whole thing out into a function here so what we could do if that helps you understand what's going on we could say render products and that is going to be a function that basically just returns some jsx for us uh, let me do this instead and then instead of having to have all this code here we could just do this so it makes it a little bit cleaner like the actual component is clean and you can see that this is just simple and if you wanted to take it a step further you could have your variables passed in so like products could be passed in here because right now these are accessing like state but in terms of pure functions you might want to actually pass in like uh, products here or whatever but we're not trying to make production ready code right this is just a little tutorial video so let's just move on we are rendering the products but what we're trying to do is also if you click on add go to cart we want to show your cart. So let's just assume there's another page called cart and we could just make another function called render cart. And you could also pull these out into separate uh, JSX components and just import them. But whatever you want to do, doesn't really matter. This is just a simple tutorial. But this code is going to be basically the same, um, except for we're going to have cart here. And instead of when you click it, it's not going to call add the cart. So we will just comment that out for right now. Uh, is that how you do it? You know, it's complaining about stuff. Let me just go ahead and get rid of that button for now. But what's it complaining about? Why is it complaining? Expected an assignment or function call and instead saw an expression. Okay, I think it's because I added the curly braces. Nice. All right, let's take a recap. What are we trying to do? We are trying to click on this button and show our cart. That's it. So remember up here, we have a new state variable called page and we want to change page to products or to cart when you click on this button. So before I get even further, I'm gonna make some constants. So I'm going to say page products is equal to products and page card is equal to cart. Okay, so I just don't like this stuff being hard coded. And then like down here, we are also like hard coding what the equality is. So that's that's no bueno. So let's go down here and change that. All right, so we need to find this go to cart button go to cart and we want to add an on click listener so i'm going to say on click call a function and that function is going to be called navigate to and i'll say page cart 
Now we don't actually have a navigate to function yet. So I can go up here, I can add one in and I could say navigate to next page. You can name these whatever you want. I'm just doing next page so that um, since page is already defined up here, it makes sense to name this something else. I don't want to overload that variable. It makes it a little bit confusing. But anyway, you can just call the setter function next uh, set page, pass it next page. And now hopefully, fingers crossed, we click this button and cart shows up. Now, so we got the initial thing working. Now the issue is, is the cart is actually showing the products because we're still, we basically copied and pasted this code, but it would make sense to instead loop over your cart. I'm sorry, let me minimize this one. These minimize arrows are your friends when your components get larger, or you could again, just separate these into different components and it'd be a little bit easier, but we want to loop over cart here instead of products so that when I go to cart, it actually only shows the things that are in my cart. Now the cart is basically not going to have like the same objects, right? It's going to have products, they have names, cost, images, whatever. But the main difference is, um, you know, in fact, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just test. If I click on, oh, I can't go back to the actual product. So that's, that's a, an issue. So we want to go back to our header and we probably want to button this as view products. Um, and instead of navigating to page cart, we want to navigate to page products. All right, so now we got go to cart and we got view products. So we can easily switch between these. And again, you probably want to use like React Router and actually navigate to a different route as you click on these buttons. But if you don't even know how to do this using state, then I wouldn't even touch React Router yet. But what am I doing? I'm trying to show you that if I add these to my cart, so I had four, three blankets and one battery, and I go to my cart, I can see that I have one battery and three blankets. And it would make sense if I could easily remove things from my cart. So that's what we're going to add next. So if I go here, I'm going to add a click callback button called remove from cart. You know what? Just remove. There's enough context to know that you're on your cart. And I will say remove from cart here. And that'll take in your product. So right next to our add to cart function, let's just add a remove from cart function. And we need to do something here. We need to remove it from the cart here. I uh, forgot the arrow. Okay. So if I add a battery, and then I go to my cart, we have a remove button here. But when we click it, we need to basically remove the item from the card here. So one way you could do that is using the filter function. Okay. If you just want to remove a single item, you could use the filter function and we might need to attach unique IDs to these, or we could attach, um, we could also do ind indexes here, but let's just try this out. Let's see what happens. Okay. So basically what we want to do here is we want to set cart and we want to set it to a new array value. So the new array is going to be cart and we want to filter all the products that um, don't equal the current one we, we sent in. Uh, let me say product to remove, loop through the cart, filter out any product that is not equal to product to remove. So I think this should work, I hope, I don't know. So I'm gonna add a battery or two in a blanket, go to my cart, I'll click remove on the blanket and it's gone. Click remove on a battery and it removed both of them. So the issue is, is that these products are actually duplicates, okay? So one thing you could do to fix that is on our add to cart, this product is basically the same object reference every single time. So you could duplicate that if you want. Um, you could instead remove from cart, could take an index, you can remove it by the index, but that doesn't work that well if you're doing sorting. So what we could do here is basically just make a new object so that when we remove stuff, it's a different object reference. I think that should work though. If I go to my cart and click on remove battery, it only removed one. Click on blanket, 
Okay, so let's just add a bunch of blankets, a bunch of batteries. Again, we got 13 items. If I click one, we're down to 12. Click one, we're down to 11. So that is, that's the gist of it. I mean, um, is there anything I'm not thinking about? Probably. So before I end this tutorial, I do want to show you some refactoring, right? Because it doesn't make sense to put all your logic into a single app JS component. It would make more sense to kind of split them up into different JSX components. And this is similar to what I did in the other tutorial. So if I go here and inside source, I'm going to make a products.jsx. And that is going to, let's see, this will work. There we go. That is going to basically render out our products here. So render products. So the cool thing about React that I love is like, it's super easy to refactor code. Like I could just take this products here and return that for my products. And then instead of calling render products, I could just import it. So import products from dot slash products. And then all we have to do is basically, instead of doing render products, I'm just going to call that component here. Uh, I hate autocomplete. I need to turn it off. Uh, products does not match corresponding name on disk. Cool. Because it's capital products. Okay. So that's working. We just have some issues because we do need to actually pass in the products now. So what would make sense is the products component is, is responsible for knowing what products there are actually in the system. So if I go here, I could just pull out this um, products array and pretty much put the state of products there. I don't need to know where the products are anymore. So let's make sure that we're good. And the add to cart function is probably not displayed. So what we want to do here is add an add to cart. And set cart could potentially be the setter that's passed in. So set cart is not defined, cart is not defined. So in fact, let me, let me do this. I'm going to leave this function inside the top level. And I'm going to basically just pass it down into my component. So if I go here, I could pass it as a prop down to my products here. So add to cart is going to be passed in. In fact, I could make this a callback function that takes in product. Wait, is that what it already does though? Yes. And, all right, I'm kind of jumping around. Um, but now, add to cart will come in through props, okay? So in React, if you want something that's passed in a props, you just go like this, boom, you have access to it. So now if I go through here and I click on a battery, it added it to the cart here, okay? And I can remove it, and I removed it from the cart. So you see how easy that was to refactor that component? Like I just made a new JSX file, copied code over, passed in some props and we're good to go. So this is one reason I love React. It's really, really easy to refactor code and move stuff around. So let's just, while we're at it, we're gonna do the exact same thing for the cart. So I'll just make a new JSX component called cart and I'm going to scaffold out a React functional component. And what I can do here is same deal. We wanna take this render cart JSX, and that is what this component is going to return. We're going to import the cart here, and we're going to render that. And instead of saying render cart, we just want to render out the cart here. And I'll get rid of that render cart function because we're not using it. Now, there is a remove from cart function that we need to pass in to that component. So we could pass in as the prop. If we go to our cart, we can make sure that we have access to it here. And we also need access to cart, right? So in this case, what I'm doing is like, I'm keeping the cart logic at a higher level um, and then passing it down. There's different ways you could do this. You could use the use context so that you can access cart directly from your components so you don't need to pass them in. But I mean, just do whatever makes sense to you. Do whatever works best for you. 
There's no right or wrong way to do things. Just refactor them if you notice that stuff is getting out of hand. That's the key. When you notice things aren't working well or slowing down your, your process, just go back and refactor them. Spend a day refactoring stuff. All right, that was a tangent. So let's just go back and if we look at a cart, we should be able to remove these blankets and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's, that's beautifully easy. I love React. View, I'm just not used to, so I run into a lot of hiccups along the way. It's it's really nice too, but when it comes to refactoring JSX, it's just it's elegant. Um, yeah, so I hope we could spend some time styling. I'm not going to because I'm lazy and I want to wrap this up. But there... Yeah, there you have it. I mean, if you have any suggestions or comments about the way I structured this project, feel free to leave a comment below. If you are new to this channel or you want to see videos that are like this in the future, be sure to subscribe and like this video because I'm going to try to publish more videos like this. And if you have an idea like this, this idea, this shopping cart app idea was actually, actually suggested by another subscriber I have. So if you have an idea that you want to see that doesn't take like five days to build like if it's something i can build in 30 minutes or an hour i might just code it up for you and show you that same day or the next day i find this stuff fun so let me know what framework except for angular i'm not going to be doing angular stuff and um if it's a reactor view let me know i'll code it up in that um yeah hope this is a good overview like always have a good day y'all